Welcome to In the Huddle with John Ritchie. I'm Sam Stafford. We're going to get right into it. John, I know people say that it was just Washington last week, but Philly looked fantastic in their first division matchup of the season. Do you believe that this team is the real deal? Yeah. I mean, after three games, they look like one of the best teams in the NFL, the, the best team in the NFC. Uh you, you watch, yeah, I think it's sustainable. Also, you know, as, as long as we continue to get really solid play from the, the guys, the big nasties up front and the trenches, uh, and that was my biggest worry going into that game, that our D-line wouldn't be able to uh, get pressure because they hadn't been generating the sacks uh, the way I'd hoped. And then voila, all of a sudden we get <laughs> sacks. I do think that's a little bit of a mirage because Carson Wentz truly sucked. I mean, Carson Wentz <laughs> yes. beyond terrible in terms of recognizing what he was doing, what he was looking at, uh, when he should get rid of the ball. I don't think we're going to have that sort of D-line success moving forward because he might be the dumbest looking quarterback in the pocket of all time. Uh, but it, uh, it's a great sign that the rest of the team has, has looked outstanding in addition to the D-line against the commies. Yeah, I mean, it was an awesome stat builder. And it's cool to think that they're going to have another boost later in the season on a Monday night because they'll play Washington again. So yeah. there you go. But one thing, once again, we saw the same uh, defensive kind of play in the second half, understandably, in this game. But do you think that's ultimately going to affect their late game stamina or their second half adjustments when they really need to show that? The second half has been a problem. I'm not I'm not exactly sure why, because, uh, you know, Nick Sirianni talked about the fact that he told Shane Steichen to ease off against the Vikings you know he took the blame on himself in this game against the commies uh we were aggressive you know we were taking deep shots and we just weren't connecting on them there it was more circumstantial this week where you know we have an ill-fated third and two where we decide to hand it to Kenny Gainwell and he did, you know there's nothing there and so the play you know the series stalls out uh we just didn't – I guess we just didn't execute quite at as high a level as we did in the first half. I don't think it's due to fatigue at this point. The guys have certainly played themselves into football shape. I don't think it's something that we need to worry about moving forward. You know, if we're playing a really good team and we're neck and neck and it's the fourth quarter, I think we've got – We've got leaders on this team who will dig deep regardless of how they feel physically. And we've got a quarterback in Jalen Hurts who has proven repeatedly that he's just such a leader. Uh, he'll figure out a way to score when we need it. But I think it's just a, th there's a little bit of the edge taken off when you're up 24 to nothing. I, I guess that's the biggest thing more than anything. I, I, this week, I think it'll be different. Based on what you what we've seen from Jacksonville, uh, aside from Week One, where they actually lost to Carson Wentz, uh, that's crazy to me. Uh, I know. Aside from that slip up, Jacksonville has really been solid, and they've got a lot of talent on the defensive side. They've got a young quarterback in Trevor Lawrence who really looks improved this year uh compared to last year he uh he's gonna he's gonna be a good good quarterback in this league and there were times last year where i questioned that he's got a ton of talent and it's not going to be as easy to get him on the ground as it was the dumb statue carson wentz <laughs> last week yeah, no, I loved Trevor Lawrence, and I especially loved the matchup when they brought Dougie P to Jacksonville. But like you said, they're in Philly this week. Do you think that this might be our toughest matchup to date so far? Yeah, I probably just because they're looking good. They are, and and you know, it felt like they drafted like first overall for ten years in a row. <laughs> 
And now you're seeing a lot of those playmakers, especially on the defensive side of things, uh, you know, with Devin Lloyd and Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen. It just feels like, man, first round, first round, first round. What a luxury uh, and embarrassment of riches in terms of playmakers. But they they fly around. They they're really exciting to watch defensively. Uh, I. I would not I, – I, I could not believe how terrible Kirk Cousins played against us. Um, you know, I guess that's in large part a credit to the Eagles just performing well uh, defensively and getting in Kirk Cousins' head. But, yeah, he was bad. I don't assume Trevor Lawrence will, like, short circuit like Kirk Cousins <laughs> would make – the, the Jacksonville Jaguars, the toughest opponent that we faced this year, which is crazy to say. Insane. But you already mentioned it. Jalen Hurts looked phenomenal last week, especially with his improvements in his passing game. But how do you think the weather that we're expecting this Sunday is going to affect his passing game, but then the game as a whole as well? Yeah. Um, wind and rain make it tough to throw the football. The beauty of this offense for the Eagles is we don't really have to throw the football to be successful. Yes. So I, and, and I, I actually like the way we match up against Jacksonville. Um, you know, the Washington commanders have a gigantic defensive uh, line defensive front. That's a little stouter than the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars are like cheetahs, you know, like fast, uh, you know, high octane sideline to sideline defenders that I, I do feel like uh, we've got a nice chance to to move out of the way with our big offensive linemen and just run the ball straight down their throats. I uh, I'm not worried about the weather. And I know that if we do have to pass it or if we do choose to pass it, we're mentally tough enough uh that we won't let it affect us. You know, the the Jaguars have to play in the wet and the wind too. And it's just a it's just a matter of mindset. And it seems like Nick Sirianni has had this team working through all those little uh little issues pretty well thus far this season. Yeah, that's one beautiful thing about the weather is it's fair to both sides in that factor. What's your early score prediction for this game? Well, I haven't seen anyone slow us down uh, except the second half uh, on the scoreboard. And I expect that we'll score in this second half uh, because the odds are an offense this good doesn't keep uh, posting zeros. So I'll say, uh, you know, Jacksonville is, is good. They, they've got playmakers. It's possible that they turn us over, which we haven't Yay. seen a lot of with uh, Jalen Hurts under center. But we're still too good to be stopped. I, I'll go like 27 to 20. Eagles win their fourth game in a row. John, that's exactly what I wrote down. 27 to 20. Oh, really? Yeah. On the very, same page. Very sharp. We are very astute. <laughs> Before we wrap up, what's your thought on tonight's Thursday night game between Miami, Miami and Cincinnati? I Somehow. Can't. I was just going to say, somehow, Miami is the underdog in this game. Yeah, I guess that's all based on the fact that uh, the Bengals played in the Super Bowl last year because they haven't played like a Super Bowl team <laughs> season. And Miami has. Look at the teams Miami's beaten. It's like Bill Belichick, John Harbaugh, and the Baltimore Ravens. And then last week, the freaking Bills, the team that everyone thought was – Far and away, the best team in the NFL. Uh, I really like Miami a lot. I really love the job that Mike McDaniel has done as a former run game coordinator with the 49ers. The way he's put together this passing offense around Tua and Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill to take advantage of all that speed. But, you know, shorter passes uh, for, for Tua's, you know, issues or you know lack of a gigantic bazooka arm uh 
it's really fun to watch. And they, they, I expect they beat the, the Bengals tonight, despite the fact that they're getting points. But I'm really looking forward to watching to see how it all unfolds. I agree with you. I think it's going to be a great game. And I, too, shockingly, am going Miami with you as well. But that's all we have for In the Huddle with John Ritchie ahead of week four of the NFL season. As always, you can listen to John Monday through Friday from 10 to 2 on 94.1 WIP. And make sure to go check out the Bet Parks app and all our social media platforms. We'll huddle up again next week. 